wind um, and this area and I'm hoping that you're enjoying the, the changing of the seasons. I'm so glad that you joined us here on Facebook and or YouTube and remember you can do a Facebook live watch party um, and um, invite your friends that are on your personal profile for that. So uh, without further um, hesitation, we're going to go right into worship and we're going to just thank you, Jesus, for who you are. Thank you for um, that you uh, never change, um, yet you have multi-facets of yourself, Lord Jesus. Father, would you reveal yourself to us this morning uh, in, um, through music, uh, we reveal yourself to us in so many other ways, in Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. All right.
But we have these battles in our lives, don't we? Where things aren't going the way that we want them. So we just worship the Lord anyway. God that is with your people. We thank you so much for this day. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. 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 Morning, Vineyard. Welcome to church today. Uh, my name is Alex. I'm one of the pastors here, and I have some announcements for you today. Uh, first of all, I want to pray as we receive our offering. So please pray with me. Lord, we love you and we thank you for your provision and uh, give us grace to be generous people. Would you please bless today's offering in Jesus' name. Amen. As always, you can give one of three ways. You can mail checks to the Vineyard Longmont at this address on the screen here. Or you can log on to our website, vineyardlongmont.org, and give uh, digitally on our Give button, as you can see there. Uh, some people come live and actually give in our offerings. Uh, or you can uh, direct deposit uh, to our bank account. Just contact us for more information on that. So a couple of quick announcements. Uh, if you are wondering where we meet, we meet at 5th and Main, actually in the upstairs of the Vita Bella coffee shop, uh, at, uh, just at 473 Main. We would love to have you at 1030 on Sundays. We also have a Wednesday night uh, equipping service. It's uh, actually a discipleship night called the Seven Step Group. We go through a curriculum and we're endeavoring to learn the life of Jesus as expressed on the Sermon on the Mount. We had a wonderful supporters party. Many of you were there. Uh, here's some pictures from the event. I want to thank everybody who's involved in helping this new church uh, get off the ground. Finally, on Tuesday nights, we have our neighborhood outreach. And uh, this week, we'll be uh, visiting a new neighborhood. If you want to join us, just contact me at my cell number there, and we will tell you where to come. God bless you guys, and enjoy church today. Hey, Vineyard, welcome to week three of uh, the two-year Bible reading plan. I'm at the uh, Larimer County Landfill, 
because uh, I thought it might be an interesting way to illustrate uh, the life of Jacob, who we read about in the book of Genesis, chapters 25 uh, through the mid-30s, something like that. Uh, plus, I had to take a bunch of stuff <clears throat> out here to the landfill. And uh, Jacob is a guy whose life is full of junk that the Lord eventually uh, rests out of him and uh, goes through a transformation of character. Let's zoom back here a little bit. We're looking at the lives of the patriarchs and this awesome promise that God uh, gave Abram that he would bless him in order to be a blessing to the world. We're going to follow that storyline through uh, his son Isaac. And so Jacob, uh, so Abraham's awesome promise is fulfilled uh, through one child by the time uh, Abraham has passed away. Uh, it doesn't get much better than that. Uh, Isaac uh, produces two children. And of course, these are the beginnings of what's supposed to be an entire nation of people that's going to bless the entire planet. Isaac's two children are Esau, his firstborn, and Jacob, his secondborn. Well, eventually the line of blessing passes through Isaac to Jacob. More on that in a moment. And ultimately, the two become 13 through Jacob. He has 12 boys and one girl. Uh, she must have had fun in that family. And then ultimately, that 13 become 53 grandchildren of Jacob or great-great-grandchildren of Abraham. <clears throat> so the lineage is beginning to multiply, uh, as is the case with God's promises. They start small often, but they inevitably are fulfilled. The New Testament tells us that everybody who has faith in Jesus is, in fact, a descendant of Abraham. And so the 53 have become millions and millions. Uh, at this point, statisticians say that about 25% of all human beings have some allegiance to Christ, therefore they have a connection to Abraham. And if you use that line of thinking, then uh, well over two billion people are now uh, these stars in the sky, the sand on the shore, uh, the those who are blessed to be a blessing. There are lots of descendants of Abraham, spiritually speaking, and, not, and of course, including the biological descendants, those who are of Jewish descent. But most of us really are knuckleheads. Uh, we're at, we have a hard time receiving the blessings of God. We have a hard time trusting God, which is often the case with uh, the descendants of Abraham. And then most of all, we have a hard time passing those blessings on to the world around us. Well, the story of Jacob is about a man who uh, is a direct uh, descendant of this blessing, <clears throat> but goes from immature faith to mature faith. And so let's pick up the story. Uh, when he's born, he's the second born of the twins. His older brother Esau comes out first, and lo and behold, uh, you see Jacob, the infant, hanging on to the heel of his older brother Esau, who's only older by a few minutes. Uh, Jacob gets his name, which means uh, heel grabber. Another way of putting that is uh, leg puller. And it fits because Jacob spends much of the rest of his life pulling people's legs, tricking them in order to get what he wants. And the story begins by tricking his brother Esau into selling him his birthright because Esau is hungry and he wants some food and Jacob apparently is a pretty good cook. Now it seems like Jacob's mom, uh, Isaac's wife Rebecca, uh, who has heard from the Lord that uh, Jacob is actually the one who the, the, the line of Abraham will continue through and, and the blessing that God has given is passed on through. Sorry for my shaking. It's a little bit of the wind. It's a little bit of the massive uh, trash trucks in the background uh, grinding up, uh, among other things, what I've left here, <clears throat> some old furniture and stuff. But anyway, Jacob begins a life of leg pulling. Uh, you ever heard the phrase, you're pulling my leg? Where do you think that came from? It came from this particular character in the Bible who was always pulling somebody's leg. That ultimately, it's time for Isaac to, uh, to go and meet his maker, and he wants to pass along the blessing. Uh, along with Rebecca's advice, uh, Jacob tricks his dad in order to receive the blessing. And we see one of the most heart-wrenching scenes in the Old Testament where Jacob receives Esau's blessing and Esau uh, is pleading with his dad, don't you have a blessing for me? And, uh, and favoritism really wreaking havoc in the lives of, uh, of people who have siblings. At any rate, uh, Esau vows to kill his brother Jacob for stealing the blessing. Uh, Rebecca gets involved against his need to leave town. Go to our relatives uh, up north uh, maybe find yourself a wife, but get away from here because Esau is going to kill you. And so we uh, go to the scene where Jacob is by himself. He has nothing at this point. 
And uh, Jacob is just camping out uh, in a town called Luz and uh, sleeping and he, ha and he grabs a rock for a pillow and has a dream. And in this dream, he sees the heavens open up in a massive stairway descending from heaven to the earth. Uh, the song by uh, Led Zeppelin called Stairway to Heaven is loosely based on this scene, very loosely. But the idea of a, of a link between heaven and earth uh, is really well communicated here through this stairway. And in this dream, he sees angels going up and down the stairway and he hears the voice of God at the, at the top of the stairway in heaven, re-declaring, reiterating, and at least this is now the sixth or seventh time God's reiterating his promise to the lineage of Abraham that he wants to bless him. Now, when Isaac gave his blessing to Jacob, he just said, God's gonna bless you and whoever curses you, he'll curse. He left out an important part, which God actually reiterates in this passage in chapter 28, that once again, through him, he will bless all of the peoples of the earth. So Jacob hears this and we see uh, the immature Jacob in his response to God in chapter 28. Here's what he says, then Jacob made a vow saying, if God will be with me and will watch over me on this journey I'm taking and will give me food to eat and clothes to wear so that I may return safely to my father's household, then the Lord will be my God and this stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house and all that you give me, I will give you a tenth. And so this sounds pretty good, except it, it shows that Jacob saying, hey, look, if you do this stuff for me, if you provide for me, if you protect me. And of course, these were things that were very important to him at that moment as he's running for his life and has nothing. If you'll do those things, then hey, I'll let you be my God. In fact, I'll even go one further. I'll give you the tithe. I'll, I'll support you financially, God. Now flip the tables, you see God uh, in the heavens almost saying, oh boy, I get someone tithing to me. We're gonna be okay up here, angels. And it's sort of ridiculous that we think we can sort of win God over with a, with a little bit of money. Now, I think the tithe is fairly important. I actually make my living, uh, on, and my wife and I do, on the tithes of faithful people. So it's not that I have a problem with that. What I have a problem with is, hey, if you do this for me, then maybe later on uh, I'll, I'll throw some money your way, God. The story continues. Uh, Jacob uh, goes to uh, uh, where his uncle Laban lives. This is the brother of his mom, Rebecca. And uh, it's the second time a family member has returned looking for a wife and Jacob sees her, he sees the love of his life, Rachel. She's beautiful, he's so beautiful and he's so happy to see her that he begins to weep. And the story continues, he goes and talks to her father, Laban, he says, I wanna marry your daughter. And he says, great, uh, why don't you work for me seven years and then I'll give her to you. And the Bible says that Jacob happily does the work and the seven years just seem like a few days and now he's ready uh, for the wedding night. And so uh, it's the big wedding banquet uh, everyone's drunk. Jacob's in his tent waiting for his new bride and, and he does sleep with her and then the morning comes and it turns out it's not actually Rachel. It's Rachel's older sister. Because Jacob was ignoring the custom of the time to, that the first daughter is the only one eligible for marriage and then after that it's the second daughter. And uh, this is sort of a theme throughout the life of Jacob him being the younger one when the older one's supposed to inherit the blessing, him choosing the younger daughter when he's supposed to choose the older daughter. Later on, uh, uh, he chooses his youngest uh, son, uh, one of his youngest sons uh, as his favorite, Joseph. And then even later on after that, he chooses Joseph's children, uh, gives the blessing to the younger of Joseph's children instead of the older. And so Jacob wants to do things his way and ironically his way often lines up with God's way. And then there's the rest of the time when his way is simply self-seeking and creates havoc wherever he goes. Do you know followers of Jesus who everywhere they go, they just create a mess that we have to clean up? Uh, it's the reason why Christians often have a bad name. It's the reason why the blessing of God often doesn't go past the person receiving the blessing. And this is the life of Jacob. So he, he uh, tells his uncle, look, uh, I was hoping for Rachel, as we discussed, and his uncle, who's pretty much as good of a trickster as Jacob is, says, look, just work for me another seven years and I'll give you the one you love as well. And so he gets the second one, uh, Rachel, right there on the spot. And, uh, and boy, is he happy. And he works another seven years now with two wives. I'm gonna continue this message. I think they're getting ready to pick me out of the dump. Continuing in a moment here. I'm just off of a tributary of the Pooter River. Uh, where a man invited me to um, 
to sit on his property and to finish this talk. And it's fitting because the first half of the life of Jacob is chaos. <laughs> And he realizes his uncle's never gonna let him go. And here's Jacob at odds with his brother and his father, who he's he's left. Uh, his father's passed away, and he's left his brother uh, back in the promised land. Now he's at odds with his uncle, the father-in-law. His father-in-law follows after him, and they decide to make peace. And his uncle Laban, his father-in-law, blesses him and says, uh, "You can go. You can go. I just wanted to say goodbye to my daughter and." And to, and to some of my grandchildren, which he did. And so now we're at this faithful scene where uh, Jacob is sending uh, his party ahead of him in waves, uh, bearing gifts, because he hears that his brother Esau is coming for him. He doesn't know what the conflict's gonna look like. And he sends uh, his possessions and waves as gifts. Ultimately, he sends his wife and youngest child at that point, Joseph, his favorite, across the river. And he spends the night by himself at the river Jabbok. And when you think of the, the person Jacob at the river Jabbok, it's actually a, a Hebrew uh, play on words. Uh, heel grabber uh, going to the place grabbed, Jacob at Jabbok. And here's what happens, starting at verse 24. So Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, let me go for it's daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, what is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel. Because you have struggled with God and, have, and with humans and have overcome. And the word Israel uh, means struggles with God. Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? And blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, it's because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. And so what we see here is uh, Jacob now no longer the person uh, stealing from others, but Jacob the one uh, making peace with others. And it makes sense that in the midst of that transformation, he wrestles with God, but he gives him a new name, which is something that God has been doing throughout this book. And Jacob's conclusion is that he was wrestling with God because of the name he gives to the place, Peniel, face to face with God. And what we see in the rest of this chapter and in the rest of Jacob's life is Jacob, the peacemaker, making peace with his brother Esau. And it's this touching scene of embracing and uh, reuniting. Uh, and J Jacob goes from somebody at odds with everybody to somebody who is actually at peace with everybody in his family. Unfortunately, his kids are not at peace with each other because they've grown up in the environment of hostility. And so this story is gonna play out in the life of Joseph, uh, who uh, his older brothers actually uh, sell him off as a slave. And the story of the blessing of God given to imperfect people continues. And uh, it's a joy to read about the life of Joseph and find out how his character is also transformed in the midst of, uh, of his pride and his arrogance. And so I close with some questions. First of all, do you believe that you are the lineage of Abraham, as the New Testament says you are, as a follower of Jesus, as someone with faith in the seed of Abraham, the ultimate descendant of Abraham named Jesus, the brightest of the stars? Isn't it interesting that when Jesus was born, a bright star shone uh, the place where he lay? Secondly, if you are in the lineage of Abraham, do you believe that God's intent is to pour out the blessings of Abraham onto you? And if that's true, then are you experiencing it or what's hindering it? Do you have the mindset, put it another way, are you a person of faith who chooses to trust God and to believe God for his blessings? And are you someone through improved character as you imperfectly follow Jesus as I do? Are you becoming someone who eventually is at peace with themselves, new identity, having wrestled with God, 
and at peace with others, those who you saw as adversaries or competitors. And as you get to that point, can you be a blessing to those around you? Can you go from Jacob, leg puller, to Israel, one who's wrestled with God and lived, and uh, therefore be at peace with God and with man, and, uh, and pass on this lineage of blessing? Let's pray. Lord, uh, help us to receive your blessing. If we're blind to it, then help us to open our eyes and count our blessings. And Lord, help us to, uh, to uh, look at you through the eyes of faith of someone who blesses and therefore be more freed up to receive the blessings you're pouring out to us. And Lord, finally, help us to pass those blessings along, not to hoard them up or to take them as our own, but simply to be carriers and, uh, and those who pass along the blessings of God so that you can show the world uh, your love through Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you, and we'll see you next week as we get into the book of Exodus, going from a place of slavery to a place of freedom as we follow the story of God's people and the descendants of Abraham.